The history of presidential libraries is akin to the uh, history of great presidents. They began with Franklin Roosevelt. He decided in the uh, late uh, 1930s that he would like to have a presidential library in his name. And it became the very first of the uh, 13 presidential libraries that we have today. Each president looks upon that library uh, as basically his chance to tell his side of the story. So I think it's a wonderful uh, opportunity to see really what the presidents themselves think of uh, their administration in terms of the best story that they have to tell. I think the best thing to know about presidential libraries is uh, uh, that they are different, uh, as different as the architecture and the, uh, and the uh, uh, stones and mortar. Uh, for example, the Lyndon Johnson Library is uh, eight stories tall, as overwhelming, as overbearing as he could be sometimes. The John F. Kennedy Library, though, if you look at it, is a lilting and silken from the outside. You look at it and you say automatically, well, that must be John F. Kennedy, and guess what? It is. Ronald Reagan from the outside uh, is on a mountaintop in Southern California. It has a western sky and you can almost hear the western music and you say to yourself, that must be the Gipper. And guess what it is? Richard Nixon is in suburban Los Angeles, quintessentially middle class, as Nixon was himself. So even before you go inside the presidential libraries, they are different. They represent the individuals. I fell in love with, uh, with politics at a very early age and with the presidency as well. Um, the uh, two that I remember when I was young could not have been more disparate in style. Dwight Eisenhower about our oldest president and John F. Kennedy about our youngest president. They were different, but when they went abroad, they were treated reverentially. You felt good about the fact that they were the embodiment of America, gone internationally. And that's what I remember. And I think that that's what drew me to the presidency. And I was uh, many years later attracted to uh, writing the book, Windows on the White House, because very few people had written, surprisingly, books on presidential libraries. I've been to all 13. They are as disparate and different as the presidents themselves, but they make for marvelous discussion, for kitchen debate, and for a wonderful travel panorama for parents if they want to take their children and really see firsthand the development and the maturing of America during the last three quarters of a century, dating back to the 1920s. A production of the University of Rochester. Please visit us online and subscribe to our channel for more videos.